Track 12. <laughs> Sorry. It's not that easy to do with your hands. Track 12, That's It, That's All, featuring Lights. That's It, That's All was probably the quickest written song on the album. We were with Dan Klenner. We were with Lights. I remember I was I was more of a byproduct. I was with Dan in Trackland and the sonic texture of the song. We were thinking about that. And I was able to witness you and Lights go through lyrics. I would say that that song, like obviously we tweak and edit over and over and over again, but the guts of the song was, it was like there within an hour or two pretty close mm -hmm. and was I was fast. watching you guys I didn't even want to suggest that much um, because you guys were riffing and it was it was the first time we've written with her and you guys went back and forth and I was like this is amazing and it kind of felt so natural that she had to sing we made that decision that she would be featured on the track because she was writing and it, it felt, felt so much like a collaboration yeah and she was like oh yeah I gotta sing it it was like it was almost like we all like two hours it just was a blip and it felt like a little moment and the rest it of the time. Feel, it did feel like when we were writing That's It, That's All, that it was the cap on the record. Yeah. Uh, and Lights has been so inspirational to, to us and to me and such a supporter of our band, but also just having her there and being able to work on this with her. It kind of felt like we were also in the same place at that moment, like we were going through a lot and, and this is like mid-COVID. Um, and just like feeling like a sense of letting go and realizing how much we couldn't control. And I think we we're both there and just wrote from that place mm -hmm. and with the piano kind of backing it and how it all came together. I've been friends with Dirouge for a while and hang out at festivals or random nights. We just had like a long friendship. And then once I got a text from Danielle, just being like, yo, we should write some time. And we were trying to make it happen for a long time and finally, the stars aligned, we were in the city at the same time. So we all went to Daniel Klenner's place and just sort of like vibed on some ideas. And it was really natural and cool. And we're similar in a lot of ways in the way our creative process goes. I think I look at Dear Rouge and I'm like, that's like me, but split into two parts. Drew and Danny are like this perfect combo of creativity, both bringing a different side of the brain. And it's cool to see them work together in music form. He sat there for a couple of days and just listened to things that we liked and jammed on the piano and threw it back to some like Robin style stuff, got really emotional with stuff and then really tuned in to um, a moment. Um, basically the last day we had this moment of really getting into this deep discussion about insecurities and our weaknesses and flaws and learning how to learn to love yourself. It's been a, sort of a big thing that a lot of people have honed in on over the course of the last couple of years. And Danny and I were on the same page uh, on the same page in a lot of ways. So we just started to sing about that and it was this really cool intimate moment and everything really flowed from there. It was just a really natural writing process about something that was really raw and real. Poetic and emotive and powerful and hopeful and yet really vulnerable. And that was, that's it, that's all. That was the song. And it was really fun. And it was fun to duet with another girl. I really love duetting with girls. It kind of like turns the idea of a duet on its end. It's not a love song, and it's, but it's a self-love song. It is like such a good end to the story of the album. It's fun knowing the track is going to be the album ender before you record any of the songs for the album. You, you kind of have it there in that spot. Mm -hmm. And I think that we tried to, while recording it, embrace that feeling.